Welcome to today's episode of the CIO Water Cooler TV. My name is David Savage and I am your host for today. I'm joined by 8x8's Andy Rawl, the Head of UK Product Marketing. How are you today? I'm pretty good, David. Thank you. Can you start by giving us some context, telling us what you do for the organisation and what they do? Okay, or well, what we do. Um, so I'm Andy Rawl. I am the head of UK product marketing at 8x8. Uh, I've been here for a good number of years. Uh, 8x8, uh, for those who haven't come across us before, or maybe uh, would like to sort of understand how we, how we see ourselves and position ourselves today, is um, we deliver what is called as experience communications as a service, um, which is usually abbreviated as XCAS. What that means is that we combine both contact center, voice communications, video chat and SMS as a solution built on a single global cloud communications platform. So that's kind of unique to us that we have the intellectual property and the environment of the platform to deliver all of those service services under a single environment. Communications is obviously incredibly important to companies. It's always been important, but even more so in this hybrid world. You're dealing with two million users. What are they asking from you at the moment? They're, they're asking us a, a lot of questions, but uh, I would always say that the, the, the first thing, the, the, the bedrock upon which any cloud communication service, built, service is built is based on uh, availability, reliability and security, kind of core tenets. Um, and so that's a key area that, yes, we're, we're innovating and user experiences, we're innovating around analytics, we're innovating around the integration of digital channels and all that great stuff. But without the fundamental issues of delivering reliability, uptime, security, no, um, no, you're not going to get far. It's actually reliability is, is probably the, uh, uh, the, the key thing that all that bubbles up, that whether we're talking to existing customers, prospective customers uh, or interested parties, they want to dig into, OK, you have a unified platform. And what, so what can you do to, to guarantee the services that you're promising to deliver? So that would be the that be the first thing. And that underwrites, uh, underpins everything that we do. Uh, the, the second thing is, is all about the, managing the, the new normal and the next normal in terms of the way that uh, the employees of an organization um, that we uh, will be providing services to, the way that they work, and ensuring that we're providing them with the tools that they need to work in the whatever environment they're working in, whether it's home, the office, or some points in between, and the different tools that they're using to do that work. Now, whether they're using a, uh, a specific interface from 8x8, whether they're using a third-party interface, something like Microsoft Teams, or whether they have a CRM-centric vision where they're using Salesforce or, or Zendesk or one of those to drive the experience. So users are saying, you know, as a vendor, as a supplier, you know, can you intercept those needs and can you deliver those you know, with, with reliability and with scale? Out of interest, are some of those organisations a little bit keen to maybe use too many tools and, and getting them to focus in on, on tools that really add value, kind of one of those, those key messages to get through to them? Um, in fact, it, the users that come to us, the customers come to us, know whether whether they're ones that are known to us and we, and we interact with them, or whether we're, when we're at events, trade shows, or, or taking calls. In most cases, customers are painfully aware of where they need to get to in terms of you know, simplification of, of the many platforms they've got. But the challenge they've had, uh, and that's what's causing inertia, is that they can't seem to find you know, the best approach to, to move forward to a, a, a more not only a more holistic solution, but a single solution. Um, so I think that's the biggest challenge, not the lack of awareness within customers. Our customers are pretty savvy these days. Um, but what they're saying, you know, for example, is, OK, we'd like to center our standard uh, users around Microsoft Teams. But at the same time, we have users with specific needs for contact center. Uh, maybe we have, we have particular needs for users in supervisory roles that need more tailored analytics. And then we have people in other roles that are, that are more sales centric. Um, and they come to say, well, here's what we've got. Can you provide us with a single means of pulling all those pieces together? And, and thankfully, we can say, yes, we can. Is, is that question then that they're posing you there leading for you, to you developing new features? Yes, absolutely. It's, it's, it's entirely iterative. 
we benefit from the fact of owning the intellectual property behind the, the building blocks of, of our core platform. And so that gives us a, a great bedrock upon which to, to build um, our services and evolve those services. The key thing that we've been talking about, and we've been doing a series of innovation events very recently, just talking about our vision and roadmap, is, is the, not the trend necessary towards, uh, but the way that uh, uh, communications applications are moving from monolithic single applications, pre-programmed and packaged applications, to microservice-based applications. So in effect, if you look at a user interface, it's not just a single piece of software delivering a single user experience. It's actually like a wireframe. And within that wireframe, you have discrete elements or microservices, uh, which the user interface is pulling together. And that's one of the things that we've, we're probably, if, if you want to identify uh, or character, characterize what we're doing and, and where we're investing. It's, it's delivering a microservices-based environment. So we can be agile in the way that we iterate our platform. We can be flexible, we can be open. And then when we, when we get to talk about some of the trends towards uh, the use of, uh, of open source technology and even using the, um, uh, the two letters AI, where we can, we can then be fully prepared to embrace that. And look, you, you talk there about AI and talk about kind of being fully prepared to, to embrace it. Is there anything specific, kind of a, a feature, a microservice, an application that you can kind of go, well, here's a really good example of something that's making a tangible difference? Uh, I'm glad you asked that because, in fact, uh, it was literally a week ago that we, uh, uh, we, made, an, we made an announcement as part of an event at NASDAQ. Uh, where 8x8 is, uh, is a quoted company on, on that exchange, where we announced a couple of innovations that directly were influenced by our move to microservices environments, um, which were, number one, something called Supervisor Workspace, which is a, a user-specific uh, environment where a user can pick and choose from a menu of uh, analytics and reporting options and they can create their own their own dashboard within, within their standard user interface. And each element of that user face has its own service behind it. And as reports are updated, they then become, uh, let's say, new tiles or new assets that could be, could be brought in. That was the first thing we announced. The second thing we announced, which is, um, I think, uh, going to be a lot of, of a lot of interest to, to those watching this, is what we call the um, uh, Intelligent Customer Assistant, or ICA as we abbreviate it. Intelligent Customer Assistant is an evolution of how we can automate call handling and take advantage of large language libraries. Um, um, you know, there's a lot of talk about chat GPT and how um, that those sort of um, a massive language environments can be used to help um, not, not. I hate to use the word intelligence because it's it, it's 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 learnt information. You know, it's logic that you're where you're using a, a large pool of data. So, intelligent customer system provides a tool that enables our customers to build um, a chat first um, based uh, interface. So, callers that are coming in um, to an organisation, yes, they can they can call using a traditional um, phone. But if they're coming in on digital channel, through a chat channel or, or through a social channel, what we're able to do is we can interact, but in a, in a much more uh, agile manner and not just through pre-programmed press one for, for, for sales, two for service. You can actually interact. And the main benefit there, David, is it's not just uh, providing just raw efficiencies and meaning you can reduce your contact center staff. It's about how can you make those staff actually have a more enjoyable uh, work day because they're answering uh, calls where they need to use their knowledge when they're talking to customers. They're not just providing you know, bank balances and meter readings because you can automate those. You talked there a little bit about the impact on, on staff themselves. I think we often get quite excited about technology. So hearing that that human piece is, is really centric to 8x8 is, is great. If you had to leave the audience with a takeaway, I suppose that might be one, but an additional one. What do you think it's important to remember here, especially given the climate and the excitement around what's, what's possible with these new tools? I, I think the, the, the overriding thing is, I mean, maybe it's an overstated term, is, is, is customer experience. So any organisation, whether public sector organisations, uh, and, and we address a lot, of, uh, a lot in, the, in that particular space in the UK, or, or more broadly in, in other sectors, now, how uh, an IT department, an IT budget, a board, um, 
uh, organization wide budget is 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 measured by return on investment and that and and sometimes that's hard to measure but increasingly how these investments are being measured is, is around the hard metrics of customer churn customer retention uh, preference scores and and you can't measure what you can't manage and so one of the things that with that we're doing within within our platform around analytics and the user interfaces is making sure that the right information is at the fingertips of the right people at the right time. So not only can they have a, a less stressful work day because the information is, is right in front of them, but also uh, you, can, you can anticipate when, let's say, customer experience is starting to wane using things like sentiment analysis, where uh, on a real-time basis you can flag or track the, the general sentiment of, of all those uh, conversations that are, that are taking place. So are people expressing words of joy or contentment or is it, is it the converse or the obverse where, where you're getting a lot of negative emotion? And that could be, that could be uh, bubbled up and then used as, to make a real difference. Look, Andy, thank you very much for taking uh, some time out of your day to, to join oh, us here on the CIO Watercooler TV. Always a pleasure, Dave. Thank you. If you've enjoyed today's conversation, please do stay. Have a look around the website. There is plenty more content for you to explore.